My favorite part of the LoopDeck CT are these dials. You can adjust saturation, contrast, or exposure, and you don't even have to be in the Lumetri color panel. This is the LoopDeck CT. This allows you to speed up your post-production workflows, whether you're editing in Premiere, sorting photos in Lightroom, or let's be honest, gaming and hanging out with your friends on Discord. Regardless of the application, the LoopDeck CT allows you to edit faster with a mixture of custom buttons, dials, and macros. LoopDeck is sponsoring this video, but they said just do whatever you want. So in this video, I'll show you how I set this device up and go over my photo and video workflows and also how I use it to record games and stream with my friends. The LoopDeck CT allows you to use custom shortcuts, macros, or my favorite, adjust settings with these dials. The dials are great for adjusting anything that you use sliders for, like exposure or temperature in Lightroom or Premiere. The LoopDeck can also auto swap based on which application you're currently using. Having custom settings based on your current app that automatically update gets you up and running very quickly. You can use their defaults that are pretty good or go full custom mode like I did and set up a lot of custom pages for yourself. To get started, let's just go over pairing this to a computer and I'll be using both my Mac and my PC for this video. To get started, connect your USB-C cable to the computer and download the software. Select LoopDeck CT as your device and make sure dynamic mode is on so the loop deck will automatically switch applications for us. When it comes to customizing the loop deck, the number pad allows you to select pages you'd like. I like to keep more generic things on page one and the other pages get more specific as they increase. One of the first things I did was go to settings and increase the brightness level and turn off haptic feedback. This one is subjective, but I've been using this device for multiple hours a day and I don't need any of the haptics. I don't find myself accidentally clicking any of the macros on the loop deck, so I didn't need that haptic feedback, so I turned it off. When it comes to customization, I reset my Mac to default settings and my PC has all of my custom settings to it, so I'll jump over to actually show you all of these custom settings. One of my favorite things about this loop deck are these dials and the dials are great for using anything you would use sliders for, but you can also press them and they have a secondary function as well. For example, the top left dial is my system volume, but pressing it mutes everything. The number pad allows you to select different pages of macros, or you can configure the numbers to be specific macros. I like keeping them so I can cycle through different pages of macros just so I can have more options to choose from than just using the one, two, three, four, and five as my only way of customization. Customizing a button or dial is as easy as selecting it in the software, finding your custom button and dragging it onto the button or dial on the loop deck. On the device, there's a four by three row of buttons in the center, while the vertical screens on the sides show you what the dials are programmed for. The large wheel on the loop deck CT also has a touchscreen that you can change and you don't have to move your hand from the dial to actually configure what the main dial is used for. This is pretty cool. It takes a little bit of configuration and getting used to, but once you set this up, changing your settings and making adjustments on the fly is very quick. Next, we'll get into making adjustments for specific apps. And if you can't find the app you're looking for in the loop deck software, there is a whole marketplace and likely they have the app you're looking for and the setup is already done, so you don't have to customize all of the macros and buttons and dials. One of my favorite ways to use the Loop Deck CT is for quick edits and color grades in Premiere Pro. Usually the default options are pretty good here, but I like to customize my keyboard shortcuts in Premiere, um, specifically for making editing as fast as possible. So here are my keyboard shortcuts for the editing menu, and then I'll go over my keyboard shortcuts for my color menu. For editing, I want to work as quickly as possible with as little amount of keyboard and mouse interactions as I can. Customizing the buttons to cut, ripple delete, and cut to end and cut to beginning allow me to make very quick adjustments in the editing window. I did replace the slide tool with the slip tool here though because I don't find myself sliding too many uh, clips one frame at a time either direction, but I do find myself using the slip tool to keep the duration of the clip the same, but just have it start a few frames earlier. For color grading, I use the dials for my basic exposure, highlights, shadows, blacks, and temperature changes. The inner macros are set to the dial for more granular controls, but the defaults are pretty good on the color page, but I found myself wanting dedicated dials for all of the exposure changes. When it came to very fine adjustments like hue versus hue or hue versus saturation, 
I tried to have this configured to the loop deck and I felt like I was spending more time adjusting it on the loop deck than I was actually using my mouse to adjust it in the Lumetri color panel. So that was one thing that I completely just left off of the loop deck. The loop deck is great for making quick edits and quick exposure changes, but when it comes to very fine granular controls like you're using a color graph for, I found that was best left to using your mouse and the Lumetri color panel. If you have a fix for this and you got that working better on the loop deck, let me know in the comments down below uh, because I do have additional pages that I can use to make that work. Another benefit here is for quick edits, you can enter full screen mode and you can still use the color panel on the loop deck to make color adjustments on a full screen uh, window. The large wheel has a touch screen. You can quickly select what you want to adjust from the screen's wheel. Then you can make those adjustments with the wheel without ever leaving the loop deck. When it comes to using the Loop Deck CT in Lightroom, I find myself using this for two things. One, going through all of my photos quickly and rating them. And then the second one is in the Develop tab, just making adjustments quickly. I'm not the kind of photographer that goes through and makes tons of heavy edits to my photos. So most of the things I can do from the Loop Deck, if you want to do a lot of masking and all that, you can also do that from the loop deck, but I found myself doing masks faster on the computer, like the Premiere Pro Hue versus Hue and Hue versus Saturation. I found the advanced things that take a lot of really fine granular control with the mouse uh, are just easier using the mouse, but things that have a slider or a button are fantastic on the loop deck CT. When it comes time to checking out all the photos you've imported, you can use the dials to quickly sort through all of your photos. And you can also use the buttons or the wheel to select how many stars you wanna give all of your photos. This makes it easy to come back to them later. And honestly, whenever I'm ingesting photos, this is about as far as I go with the uh, regular sorting tab. I don't really use a lot of the flags or filters. I just go through, rate the good photos, uh, you know, four or five stars, and then the bad photos, one star, or just delete them. Uh, so that is about the extent that I use the loop deck when it comes to sorting through photos. But when it comes to the develop tab, I like to use the full screen adjustments again, just like I did on Premiere Pro. And I can make all of my exposure and saturation adjustments right there on a full screen on my laptop, but I'm using the dials to do so, and I don't have to tab over to the develop tab to do so. Having a full screen image and making multiple adjustments quickly with these dials has really been my favorite way to use the Loop Deck CT. When all the work is done and it's time to hang out with your friends on Discord and play some games, you can also customize the Loop Deck CT to have a couple of different custom pages for gaming, controlling your Twitch streams if you're listening to Twitch between matches, or Spotify if you're listening to Spotify between matches, or muting yourself in Discord or a couple of different uh, Discord hotkeys. You can just map those to custom buttons on the Loop Deck CT. Another cool action about the Loop Deck CT is that you can customize just about everything on it. So if you don't find something that you like, you can just make a custom action. Um, they call macros custom actions in their software. So you can make a custom action that whenever you press it, it launches a new web page, delays 1000 milliseconds, and then types in the text, YouTube. I don't know why you would wanna do this, but if you set that up like I just did, and then you press the new multi-action button, it'll go to a new tab, go to Google, wait a thousand milliseconds, and put in YouTube. Things like this make the Loop Deck CT very powerful. So if you're finding something that you're doing over and over, uh, you can just make a macro that can do it for you. And that really is the power of the Loop Deck CT. The ability to customize not only app-specific shortcuts, but configure system-wide macros makes the Loop Deck more powerful than just a keyboard shortcut tool. So what do you guys think of the Loop Deck CT? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And thank you guys for sticking around to the end. Thank you Loop Deck for sponsoring this video, and I'll see you in the next one.